Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Wednesday now, the 22nd of May, 2024. My webcam decided to stop working. That's fun. So you don't get to see me for the next few days until I either get a new laptop or figure out what the heck happened. Who knows why these things go on, but whatever. I'm here. Let's talk about this new outlook here from the UK Met office going all in on a hyperactive season. We'll take a look at that and what's going on out there, which, hint, hint, not much right now, which is fine because we think it is going to be very busy later on. So jumping right to that, got up this morning and I saw this tweet here, or post, whatever you want to call it, from our good friend Dr. Phil Klotzbach in the UK Met office. They're over in the United Kingdom, of course. That's why it says UK Met. Their official seasonal forecast, their forecast guidance continues with the trend of predictions for a hyperactive 2024 Atlantic season with the most likely outcome featuring 22 named storms, 12 of those becoming hurricanes, four of those hurricanes becoming category three, four, or five, and an ace of 175% of normal, which translates to an ace of about 212. There's a terrible some writing for you with the mouse, but an ace of 212. And there's a link right here, and I took the courtesy of clicking on that link, and you can see the reasoning behind what they are looking at. And I think that's important because this is where the science is leading us. This is what we're seeing in the modeling, what we're seeing in the real world with all the different parameters that I've been showing you for the last several months falling into place, and it is almost time uh, to see if this is actually what is going to happen. June 1st, the official start of hurricane season, as you know. But it's a good little write-up here about the background and what they're looking at, so forth and so on, how their track record has been. And I will put a link to this in today's description so that you can read it yourself. I think it's important for people to learn more on their own, and I encourage you to do that. So you uh, came at office joining and this is their second update, um, I think it is, of the year, but joining the rest of the camps in suggesting that we have a very busy hurricane season. Tomorrow, we have this from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They will release their forecast for the upcoming season, and there's no reason to think that it'll be any different than what we're seeing from all the other reputable agencies, and it's just time to get ready, period. We have to mentally prepare and be ready physically and fiscally with an F. That means money. And we're going to continue to address all of that in the coming weeks with different guests on our Hurricane U series to get you. Yeah, I ought to rechange it to Hurricane Y-O-U. Hey, there you go. The original idea was Hurricane U, like a university. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I've uh, uh, interrupted my own self here thinking too much. But the point is we do want you to be ready and just remind you of certain things, maybe introduce you to new concepts, new technologies, new innovations, uh, and just think about hurricanes more because this is the type of season that it, where it could just be very, very busy, and we all have different lives and things going on, and we want to make sure that you are as prepared as you can be for your individual situation. We really do. So tomorrow we get the NOAA outlook, and I think we can all agree that looking at the anomaly maps here, we know the players, a very warm Atlantic look overall relative to average, the developing cold episode of ENSO or El Nino Southern Oscillation, maybe a La Nina. It takes a while for that to be officially locked in, but clearly we are seeing these colder anomalies here extend outward from South America all the way across through the Nino 3-4 regions, as we call it, and the, the fact that there's just no El Nino with all of this very warm water relative to average in this horseshoe shape, when we go back and look and ask the models what years gave us, we don't have to ask the models, you just go look at data yourselves, but it's easier to do it with models and computer programs that are written by people much smarter than me. But we can go back and we can look and we can ask what was the profile that gave us these hyperactive seasons in the past? And it's not random. There is a pattern, and this right here is the main pattern right there, where you don't have a warm inso, 
you do have a very favorable Atlantic, so you put a plus here, a minus here. This is down, this is up, and it's just about time for this to uh, manifest itself, and we, we see what happens, all right? Luckily, nothing right now. Probably not going to get a May-named storm. We had those for several years in a row, and then we've taken a break. Um, but we're watching this area of the Atlantic Basin in the coming weeks. I talked about that in yesterday's update as a Madden-Julian oscillation event or just a period of favorability comes along and takes advantage of climatology. We would normally be looking at that area, but nothing to worry about right now and nothing through the upcoming Memorial Day weekend, which is very important, the unofficial start to summer. Eastern Pacific also nice and quiet overall. And don't forget, this is the 48-hour outlook. This is the seven-day outlook, and the same is true in the Atlantic the tropical weather outlook goes out to a week. So I figured it's time for me to, when we do these looks at the models, that we should also go out a week and not just the typical five-day time frame. Uh, you know, once you get beyond three days, things start to become very uncertain with any weather pattern, and that is always the caveat. But we'll look at seven days in our hunt for when something might develop, and uh, I think that fits very nicely in with what the Hurricane Center is doing with their outlooks. And if you've been watching my videos long enough, you know I've typically tried to keep it five days or less. On occasion, we'll look out beyond that. But this year, the official policy change here is going to be seven days, because why not? And so to that end, we have our good friend, the ECMWF, and uh, that's the Euro European Center for Medium Range Forecasting. This is their deterministic operational model, the Euro for short. And we are looking at, let me highlight it in kind of a blue color, the 850 millibar height and cyclonic vorticity. And that's what I'm really looking for right there, the cyclonic vorticity uh, in the atmosphere. And this is the lowest 5,000 feet, all right? And when we see that curl up and bundle, we know that something is a foot, so to speak. So here we go. This is uh, every three hours, I think, really nice. You get a lot of frames there. So scooting this out to the next 168 hours, one week, we see nothing across any of this region that bundles together. Any pieces of energy are strung out like this. This is all stuff that leads to convection and thunderstorms. That's Texas up there. Um, but no, nothing down in the tropics, and I can rewind this and show you again. That's what we're looking for. We want to see, does anything come together? And at least here in the East Pack, nothing over the next week, and honestly, the next 10 days. In the Atlantic Basin, starting off, there are pieces of energy out here, but look at this. It's nice and broad, covering a large area. It's not concentrated. This is just some shenanigans with the way the wind flow, geographic stuff coming off of Columbia and the way it interacts down here with the Caribbean Sea. Sometimes these pieces of vorticity that kind of get flung out into the Caribbean do try to concentrate. Maybe they interact with a tropical wave coming west, and those get together, and you can get something to develop. But that's not the case anytime soon. And as with the East Pack, as we scooch this out to 168 hours, a couple of features to watch, and you can see one right here southeast of Jamaica. It even has sort of these arms on it, right? So a little bit of disturbed weather there over the next several hours. This is 15 hours out. And um, you know what I want to do? Let's go back over here. Kind of forgot to do this. We'll just go to satellite. And let's just take a look at what's happening down there. And um, yeah, we'll do this one here. True color is fine. Um, so that what energy is down there? Well, there's a little bit right here. You can see that. I'll highlight it a little bit better for you. There is some energy down here, but again, it's kind of broad. But doesn't matter. There's still some rainfall with it, and that's going to impact portions of Haiti and uh, maybe eastern Cuba, uh, maybe parts of Jamaica. But you can see that. That's what's pretty neat about all this. In the modeling, that's what this looks like. You know, it almost looks like a little fish there, accidentally. But that's what it looks like in the Euro at the 5,000-foot level. And... Um, you can kind of track this and see what happens with it. And as we go forward, not much happens with it. It's rather diffuse overall. And that energy, though, and that's, that's very important to point out. This is energy in the atmosphere. And so this cyclonic vorticity 
you know, there's going to be rain under that in some cases. So it's not like there's nothing there, but tropically speaking, tropical cyclones bundle energy. That's not bundling at all. That is stretched out over a couple thousand miles or more. So no, that doesn't fit the bill of what we're looking for. Now later on down the road at about day three, again, this is kind of what we start to look for, but it's, you know, separated, not congealing. Nevertheless, that is what we start to look for in the tropics, the bundling of that heat energy, and uh, it doesn't go on to do much. Uh, and as we approach the end of the month here, there's 168 hours right there, and we're at May 29th on this particular run of the Euro, and things will hopefully stay quiet as we approach the start of the season, because beyond that, the clock will start, all right? So I am uh, doing this anonymous update, so to speak, where you can't see me. Stupid webcam, the integrated webcam. I guess I'll just have to buy a USB one. That should solve the problem. Anyway, uh, we are tracking hail. It's my new project, and it's, it's very difficult, that's for sure. But it is important. Hail causes a lot of damage <clears throat> on an annual basis, and it is the least talked about, I think. Uh, I mean, flash flooding gets a lot of attention. The tornadoes certainly do, and what we saw yesterday in Iowa, horrifying. But we don't want to ignore these hydrometeorites, as we call them, uh, because they have a big economic impact because of their kinetic energy. And it's really that simple. I'm using these big words, but it's true. You take these frozen ice balls or chunks or aggregates, and you slam them into man-made products, stuff, our stuff, our people, places, and things, and you you have loss, loss of uh, economic, uh, you know, the impact is significant. And we're just starting out, this is our first year, and to that end, we will be out here today. Our target area will be down here in Texas, and we can see why if we look at the hail threat. Pretty large area, you know, you might be wondering, well, why not southwest Arkansas? Well, you got to read the discussion. And in the discussion in here, laid out very nicely, and some of it is technical, you find what you're looking for in terms of where to be. And we do have this one paragraph that talks about some activity up in Oklahoma and uh, southwestern or southeast Kansas. But then this one, this is the one that got my attention, that additional thunderstorms coming out today, a few supercells are expected, but then right here, because of ones that remain discreet, where they're by themselves, well into maturity, pose a risk of large to giant hail. And we are equipped with that. I've got Greg Nordstrom with me, and we are equipped to handle that with our uh, Toyota Tacoma and um, this massive hail guard that we've got on there. And hopefully tomorrow I can show you some pictures and video. Um, I want to get this online so we can start driving, but... That's what we're going for right in here, the large to giant hail. And our target area, again, is more likely going to be, if we put the cities on here, somewhere along the I-20 corridor. Abilene points east from there towards Dallas and then eventually sinking south and east. That's our target area. There is a threat, of course, of tornadoes. It's not zero, which I wish they were because I think we're all just about done with the tornadoes. Um, so we'll have to be on the lookout for that. And that's Greg's responsibility. I'll put it all on him. All right? Usually I come on and I say goodbye in person, but again, the webcam is AWOL today. So what can you do? But that's it for me. All right? You guys have a good rest of your Wednesday as always. Thanks for tuning in from all of us at Hurricane Track. We do appreciate your time and attention. And uh, don't forget, subscribe on YouTube so you know when we're doing stuff and make sure the notifications are on. And when we go live like we will later today around the noontime, Hour Central uh, will be live on YouTube amongst you know all the other chasers that do it. We do it too, except we're going for the big hail, and uh, that could be a really interesting thing to watch. All right, so if you subscribe and do the notifications, you'll know. All right, have a good one. I am Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.